come very late in life mainly because if your creatinine test which is the marker of kidney function mm -hmm. is 1.8 or 1.7 it would still mean that half your kidneys are gone and at that stage you hardly have any symptoms you pass good urine um, your urination if at all will be a little um, uh, frequency once or twice extra in the night which you take it as uh, cold or winter or part of diabetes and in elderly people part of prostate and so on so you would pass it off as a simple um, urinary complaint and not to give you a clue for kidney disease only when the and even if the creatine becomes three the the conclusion is hardly one fourth of kidneys is remaining in your body and lot of doctors patients feel okay the normal value is up to 1.5 mine is only 2.5 or 3 i may be having a very mild disease when actually the kidneys have almost gone there is 70 75 damage so even if 10 15 20 percent of kidneys are remaining the functions are enough to carry on for normal life and that's the reason why you send patients for dialysis only when the kidney function is 5% or you send them for transplant when it is 5 to 8% of kidney function remaining maybe abroad they will send a 10% but in india around 5 to 7% kidney function if it is remaining we still carry on with conservative medical line of treat the fear is that unless and until you do certain preventive tests or you do certain health checkups you will miss the bus you will miss the early disease and hence if you are asking me a question of what test would pick up a kidney disease earlier then let me uh, answer it by way of the fact that everybody who is beyond 50 years should undergo a routine kidney health checkup whether he has a symptom or disease or not okay if you can afford if not then at least there are high risk groups of people who must undergo these preventive tests and uh, even my foundation called mumbai kidney foundation is taking up uh, on itself to try and uh, mo you know proclaim or not proclaim but try and spread this message that prevention is the only way you can pick up an early kidney disease and the tests are not too expensive okay. even if you do a simple urine routine test then that protein leakage can be picked up significant quantity or reasonable quantity leakage in the urine will be picked up and urine analysis is the mirror of what is happening in your kidneys it could be a harbinger of something sinister that would be happening later on it doesn't cost too much less than 60 80 100 rupees you will get a urine test done once you have protein leakage you could go to higher tests like a serum creatinine or a gfr estimated a gfr means a glomerular filtration rate it is a slightly better um, indicator of your kidney function better than creatinine but a simple serum creatinine blood urea a gfr estimation these tests again don't cost more than 100 rupees and they would give you an indication of whether your kidneys are functioning well or not Essentially even not before yeah even before the urine stick or strip shows a protein leakage now you have some strips which pick up microalbuminuria or a still smaller quantity of protein leakage which gives you an idea that or it's a red signal that your antenna should go up and uh, it's a warning symptom that you should start repeating this test or going further ahead to do this test you were asking some questions yeah doctor this this essentially means that creatinine is only a basic marker you know you can't uh, entirely depend on the creatinine sure. level being low right so as i said that the earliest and the best way to pick up an early disease is to do a microalbuminuria or a gross albumin protein leakage by way of urine routine and then gfr or glomerular filtration rate for which you require a serum creatinine your age and weight or now uh, most of the good laboratories have an inbuilt software by which they will calculate and give you a glomerular filtration rate based on that nephrologist and even a common person can grade his disease as to whether he is suffering from stkd stage 1 2 3 4 5 and accordingly treatment is available which can either halt the disease improve it or at least slow down the progress of kidney disease so the essential answer is that 
it would be silent in lot many cases do not wait for symptoms to come if you belong to the high risk group as i mentioned and i, I think i couldn't complete the high risk group one was diabetes the other was high blood pressure third is people whose family members have a kidney disease or those who have suffered in childhood or in past a kidney problem those who have high blood pressure during their pregnancy people who have stone disease as renal stones or uh, urinary stones people who have recurrent urine infections from time to time and all those who are obese because obesity is one of the reasons why you could land up with kidney disease and all those who are senior citizens wherein again uh, kidney disease is common and sorry I couldn't mention those who take painkillers yep. or Ayurvedic bhasmas, which uh, traditionally in our country are uh, at least people feel that many of the non-allopathic medications are relatively safe. That doesn't mean allopathic is safe. Allopathic definitely has its problem of certain medications. But just be careful when you go for non-allopathic medications also. Some of them would contain heavy metals and in a normal individual it may not cause that much harm. But with somebody who has a borderline kidney functions, his kidney or his body will retain those heavy metals in much larger quantities instead of excreting by way of urine and this heavy metal toxicity can have um, bad consequences. Yeah. Okay, doctor, when it comes to heart problems uh, caused by kidneys, you really think uh, that uh, it can actually, kidney failure can actually make heart problems worse? So as, as um, it happens in medicine, the cardiologist is king in our line also and similarly heart remains the king of all the illnesses which is why kidneys take a back seat in many of the common tests people do. People are worried of their heart and they will go for stress testing and HCG and all those tests but forget the poor urine uh, routine test. <coughs> yes, cardiology is important. Yes, heart disease is important and uh, is very prevalent. Mm -hmm. But kidney disease could add up to the problems or complications of cardiac or heart involvement in diabetes. So per se diabetes is a risk factor for heart disease. Per se diabetes associated what we call as comorbid condition that means cholesterol, lipids, uh, the arteries getting clogged with some of these harmful medication, uh, harmful products like lipids and triglycerides. The same disease can involve the kidneys, the arteries of the blood vessels, uh, or the arteries of the legs, you know, the retina and so on. So the same illness which affected the kidneys will affect the heart. Cardiac patients or those who have even a very early chronic kidney disease can have more than 10 times the risk even at that early stage to develop a heart problem and at a later stage when the kidneys are failing more than 100 times the risk of a person who has diabetes with no kidney problem and a person who has diabetes with uh, kidney problem the difference is going to be almost 100 times the risk to the heart. So kidney problem is a double whammy. It not only causes kidney failure but increases the risk of cardiac Failed. Doctor, also there is also one another you know situation where there is a lot of uh, uh, fluids in the I mean the, the water retention in blood that can actually add pressure to the heart. Sure. So apart from the blood circulation to the heart being low and an angiography picking it up. There is something called a small vessel disease where small, small capillaries or small, small blood pressures of the heart also become weak or do not carry as much blood circulation and the overall pumping of the heart goes down. Right. What we check by a 2D echocardiogram is what percentage of the pumping of the heart remains and many of these diabetic patients instead of having a 70% pumping of the heart will have barely 40% ejection fraction. Such people they have a double problem. When they eat even the normal quantity of salt or even a reduced quantity of salt and in normal water intake that much is one side not excreted by the kidneys so they retain water and on the other side the heart doesn't pump well and therefore it doesn't reach the kidneys so easily. So from both the sides 
the amount of water and salt which they consume is not removed by the kidneys and not pumped properly so they develop swelling and therefore be careful of advising uh, a kidney patient to drink a lot of water if he has a poor heart and if he has a poor kidney your advice of drinking a lot of water could have an extremely harmful effect so a lot of water is good for those whose kidneys are functioning normally and they have a stone disease or they have a urinary infection such kidney illnesses should be treated with a lot of water or a normal person who doesn't want to have a kidney problem he should drink a lot of water but once your kidney functions are poor or once your heart function is poor lot of water is harmful in fact you should restrict water so by the way i thought i should just give this advice to right. uh, a lot of people Perfect. Uh, doctor, it's also known that you know the blood pressure as well as uh, uh, anemic conditions get worse when kidneys fail. Uh, of course, it's also yeah. because of that hormone. Yes, yeah, I'll come to it. Yeah. So we we all know that kidneys uh, do remove the harmful waste products of the body. Normal whatever you eat is converted into waste products. but it also removes water it also removes salt it also removes uh, certain electrolytes like potassium and so on other than that it has a hormonal function that means the kidney is a source of producing certain hormones which are important for your blood pressure management which are important for the bone marrow to produce blood and which is important for your bones and muscles to remain healthy these three important hormones apart from many others but these three important ones are actually used now in the form of treatment also for kidney patients and you need to be when you do dialysis you are actually removing only the waste products but the hormonal function of it should be replaced by way of medicines and it's only transplant or a new kidney which is a comprehensive treatment for kidney failure because it not only removes waste products it replaces all the deficiencies of the hormone so one important uh, corollary of this statement is when you advise people eat lots of fruits because blood will increase eat lots of khajur or dry fruits because your hemoglobin will increase and you might take kilograms of iron tablets but it will not improve the hemoglobin of a kidney failure patient because he lacks the hormone which will pick up that iron which you eat and convert it into blood and that deficiency will actually prevent his hemoglobin from going up for heaven's sake therefore do not advise a kidney failure patient who is on dialysis to keep taking a lot of fruits and dry fruits so that his hemoglobin comes up we as a country um uh, do advise uh, or give unsolicited advice to everybody including our neighbors so i think uh, this part yes, should doctor keep... there is also one email which we have received uh, one kidney patient who is on dialysis he says that although he takes that hormone erythropoietin yeah. regularly his uh, hemoglobin and, uh, his hemoglobin is simply not picking not up picking. it's uh, still around 7 to 8 right what could be the reason <laughs> right. for that kind of situation yeah. so there are two parts to this answer one the hemoglobin is dependent on many factors other than this erythropoietin hormone your iron level should be good your b12 level should be good and if you are a vegetarian you could be having a b12 deficiency your folic acid levels have to be good you should not have chronic infection in your body when you are on dialysis and you should not have any associated chronic disease due to which you went into renal failure say arthritis or a, a immunological disease which uh, affects both or or cancer like multiple myeloma which involves the bone as well as the kidneys now these are the other areas which can be easily corrected okay. before you give erythropoietin but other than that erythropoietin as a hormone has certain specialties one it should be always kept in cold chain and should be used with a particular temperature now you will say i always carry it in a bag of ice but from the source from where you brought it that person has to keep it in ice the chemist fridge should have a 24 hours power supply and in a country where power supply is um, very erratic 
we will face situations where the cold chain will be not maintained properly. Absolutely. Thirdly, if your dialysis is inadequate and the blood levels of urea and creatine are very high, that even if you take erythropoietin, unless you remove all the toxins from the body, erythropoietin will not work and finally, body can sometimes produce antibodies against erythropoietin which uh, then whatever amount of erythropoietin you will take will be destroyed by the body and it will not have an effect on the bone marrow to produce but it. But is there a solution to that, uh, dealing with antibodies? So, so there, there are a lot of products which have been tried. One, instead of erythropoietin people try other kinds of what we call as ESAs, erythrocyte stimulating agent. That means certain other items which can stimulate the bone marrow to produce blood which will not be handled by the antibodies. They are not against. So these, some of these are Darbapoitin, Mircera. These are some new agents which have come which probably these antibodies may have less effect. So you could try that. And lastly, there are steroids and uh, certain drugs which can work against the antibodies and help in improving hemoglobin but more often it um, is a difficult solution and you will land up eventually receiving blood transfusions it's the best way is to get a transplant done and your problem of uh, erythropoietin since it okay. is lost. Doctor, uh, by any chance can any internal bleeding also cause sure. uh, the... So this is an important point which we uh, lost in our discussion that other than your medications not making blood they may be making blood but you may be losing blood and commonly you can lose blood through the stomach eh, other than the other organs but through the stomach it is common because many of these people would be on blood thinners like icosprin and so on and at the same time when you do dialysis then use another blood thinner which can uh, prevent the clotting of blood and during dialysis so you could lose uh, blood and uh, not be aware of it uh, it could be in smaller quantities, so you need to get your stool examined.